a very good afternoon. Uh, I am not an expert on hydrogen, but I do have an understanding of investments. I do have an understanding of finance. So I thought I'll very quickly talk about how is it that new novi sectors such as hydrogen can attract the right kind of investments. Uh, I'll just very quickly put in context as to why hydrogen, what is it that we're talking about, and I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted. Uh, but two-third of the world, two-third of the countries in this world are living in an energy poverty. What that means, I'm sure all of you know, is that we're talking about fossil fuel uh, energy, which is one uh, very, very uh, impacting, I it impacts health of uh, population in these countries. And second, of course, the reason for that is there is not sufficient technology, there is not sufficient uh, uh, sustainable finance that is available in such countries. If I flip the coin and I look at the rest of the one third, the problem there is that these rich countries have, sus have sustainable energy, they have access to renewable energy, uh, but they have traditional power, which is the main source of energy, leading to significant amount of greenhouse emissions. To put it in perspective for everybody here, uh, countries like Ethiopia actually emit enough greenhouse uh, emissions in, a, in, four, in one year, which is equivalent to the emissions of US in four days. That is the kind of disparity that we see in the world. What is the solution? The solution that exists is sustainable and financially viable sources of energy, which are applicable and available to the entire world. Uh, there's a lot of work that has already happened across the globe in this space, especially in areas such as solar and wind energy. Uh, we've already spoken a lot about solar energy, but I wanted to bring in the perspective of how is it that solar reached where it did. And I wanted to bring an India angle to it as well, considering how uh, there is a significant amount of potential that exists in India for hydrogen. And how is it that we take learnings from solar and then implement it to, to a sector like hydrogen? Uh, when we started with hydrogen, what was the first aspect that made hydrogen viable? The first aspect was grants. The first aspect was viability gap funding provided by the government of India. The first aspect was funding from DFIs, development financial institutions such as the World Bank. Uh, uh, a lot of you might know that there is a potential for the government to provide up to 40% of a project's uh, funding whenever there is lack of viability. That is something that we've of course seen in ca areas where you know technology is more expensive. We had a great classic view on how technologies develop over years. Uh, what of course is the challenge when it comes to financing them is the amount of money that is needed. That is exactly where viability gap funding, DFIs come into play. The second aspect that worked very well in India when it came to solar was that of Indian conglomerates or Indian private companies. Uh, we've seen com players like Adani come into play, who we have other large conglomerates who actually came in and invested in India's solar energy. That is where we started seeing reduction in technology prices considering the involvement of private companies. What was the third phase? The third phase is where strategic and intellectual institutional money started coming in. So, you know, we've spoken about uh, private equity, we've spoken about pension money coming into, a, into any sector. The only reason they come into a sector is when there is proof of concept, when there's proof of pudding and there is enough potential to generate return. This is a space where uh, in solar we've already seen significant amount of transactions. In fact, I'd like to highlight here that every renewable energy project in India, every solar project in India is a public-private partnership, which means we have moved from a stage where the government had to give viability gap funding to a stage now where each and every project in India is funded by private parties. The only reason for that is that all these pre projects have become viable enough to have a private party come in and generate money. Uh, the next aspect of it, so you know, when I spoke about all of these, I'm sure a lot of us know that there was no technology in India. We didn't have solar panels. More than 90% of our solar panels were coming in from China. In fact, it was to the extent that even insurance for these, for these solar, solar panels were Chinese. 
So one, you get the product from that country and you don't even have an insurance product in your own country. So if there is something that goes wrong, you will never have the Chinese insurer pay you. So what was the solution? The solution was, you know, you moved from, again, viability gap funding to a stage of uh, pr Indian private companies to institutional money coming in. The next stage, which was obvious, was mass scale manufacturing. How did the government do that? One of the stages was PLI. So I know one of the presentations spoke about PLI, but PLI has actually become uh, relevant to any sector when there's potential for mass production in the country which is exactly uh, what is now happening in solar. In fact, we actually came out with projects where generation of power was combined with manufacturing first to have players like Adani and Azure, they, these are the two who won those bids. These are the kind of people who came and started manufacturing along with generation. And now along with a, with a PLI, there is a potential for large scale manufacturing in a country. That is the kind of trajectory that India saw when it came to solar. I think one of the most brilliant things that you know we've seen in our presentations in the past, uh, past as well is the one, one, one. The power that we have in a country like India is that you have large scale conglomerates who are ready to put in investments up to 70 billion. And we've all seen it in sectors such as electronics. We've seen it in telecom where telecom is the cheapest in India. The only reason for that is one very good policy ecosystem and the fact that there are people who are ready to put in that kind of money. I think we are, we are going to see something very, very similar in hydrogen as well. Uh, the good thing about where we are, and you know, we, we've had a conversation about lithium ion, we've had a conversation about the fact that, you know, we were, we were not the front runners. Uh, lithium ion is strategic, uh, wherein we had China go out and buy mines in Australia for lithium ion. India did not take that kind of, of a stance initially. However, when we talk about hydrogen, I believe uh, we are also front runners. This is a new and upcoming technology across the world. There's a lot of thought process that has already been built into the country when it comes to uh, building technologies. We already have a concept and a draft green hydrogen policy which exists. We've spoken about the government supporting by way of bonds. Uh, there is, of course, the thought process of now getting uh, the right kind of funding for technologies, be it by way of viability gap fundings, be it by, by way of the second level wherein conglomerates come in, by way of corporate bonds. And I've spoken a lot about the equity side of it, which comes in again at a smaller level in smaller chunks. The next piece, and you know, of course, we have Mayang talking from a banker's perspective as well. But the next aspect here is going to be debt wherein uh, you will see more corporate bonds, you will see more green bonds, there's a potential for masala bonds, but all of that comes in after there is proof of concept, uh, after there's proof that there's potential to generate money, and that, that potential can only come in with the viability gap funding, corporate investing, and technology development that happens. Uh, I will conclude here given the, the time with only just one last thing about us. So as Invest India, what do we do? How do we contribute to this? Invest India is the national investment promotion and facilitation agency. Our job is to get the right ki kind of investors, both domestic and international in all the right sectors. So if we know of technologies which have a potential for funding and we know of potential funders or looking at Spaces such as green hydrogen, our job would, would be to do that kind of a matching, to be able to get that kind of a platform for technologies and investors. So uh, with that, I'd like to conclude and thank you for your time.